Hello, my lovely Morbid Thoughts. Welcome back to my channel. It's Morbid Gamer here with another video for you guys. So today we are not only just gonna be playing with The Sims 4, we're actually gonna be playing with all the past generations of The Sims. Now by the title, it's down below. <laughs> we are starting a new series on this channel and it's one that I'm pretty excited about because I haven't delved back to any of the previous Sims generations in a good while, especially the very old ones. So I'm excited to go back and play with some of these aspects. So for this series, we're going to be covering certain specific topics, which in this video, we're going to be looking at create a sim and looking back at past generations from the Sims 1 all the way to the Sims 4 and seeing how things have maybe evolved or maybe even gone backwards in certain aspects. I'm talking about you babies. I do want to point out that there's already a great series on uh, YouTube by The Red Plum Bob. That is the channel who covers the same thing, well informed, and I will leave them linked down below so you can check them out. Now, I want to do things a little bit different. I want to personally just delve into things, play around with things on my own terms and like kind of give my own point of view and stuff like that. So I just wanted to point that out. At the end of this video, we are going to be rating who did it best. So stick around for that. But before we get started, public service announcement. If you are not subscribed to this channel, why the heck not? It is completely free, free 99. And I think that's not only that, but don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can become part of the early squad. Not only that, but hit that little like button so you can help your girl out. You like me, why not help support this channel? It's really hard out here on these YouTube streets. Last but not least, if you want to go above and beyond, hit that little join button so you can check out the extra channel perks that you get if you decide to pay a monthly subscription to the channel, but like no pressure or whatever. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we have to go back into the past, back to the years of the early 2000s with the first Sims. Sims 1. So, oh my god, this looks so different. This is crazy, but it's kind of got a Sims 4 vibe, but we're not really looking at the world today. We're actually going to be looking at create a sim. We are going to click down here, create a new family, last name, gamer, first name, morbid, add a new sim. This is so different. I know that font. I know that font. It's at the tip of my tongue. Is that Comic Sans? The first thing that I noticed is that this is very simple. This is simple. There's not that many options that I'm seeing. This is all that you get in Create a Sim. You can make a child or you can make an adult. That's the only two options that you get. You get two life stages. When it comes to skin color, you only get three options. At least in Sims 4, you get a few. <laughs> That's about the extent of the skin tone swatches. And then, of course, you get two genders. Male, female. For the sake of this video, we're gonna go female. Um, and I'm gonna go with a me medium skin tone. I think I'm a medium-ish, more on the lighter side skin tone color. Now on personality, I remember this when I was a kid. I played Sims 1 ever since I was a kid. I got to choose how much you wanted to be neat, maybe not so much, maybe more outgoing, active, playful, and nice. And according to what it is that you play, it would give you a zodiac sign. Now I think the more fascinating aspect of this, the more luring part of Create Sim is probably like being able to customize your sim and change their hair color. But at this, it just gives me different heads with different hair options. I really like this one, uh, but let's look at everything that they have to offer. I remember Bella Goth actually has, I think she has this hair in The Sims 1. Oh my goodness, there is not that many. No pink? Come on. Oh, I like that one. That's very platinum. And she looks like she's styling, fam. She looks stylish, even though I'm not a blonde, but like, F it. I really like this one. It shows the most character, and so we're gonna keep it. For outfits, you obviously only get one form. You don't get weight in this yet, but y'all know in future generations of The Sims, you can mess around with weight and other aspects of your body. But here you just get one form, which isn't too customizable. Ooh, that's spicy. If anybody knows my type of gameplay, I like spicy Sims. I like when they look out there, 
showing a little too much maybe, but that's my type of gameplay. It's gonna be sick. I think I'm content. It, it looks really random, but I'm content. I'm content with it. Now for the uh, for the personality, we gotta work around this a little bit. I'm not that active. I wish I were, but I'm not. So we're gonna leave it there. I tend to be very playful. I'm not that neat, but I'm not the worst at it. I'm very nice. I, I feel like at a fault sometimes too. I'm a little too nice. All right, I think we are done with create a sim and that's it now for the sake of this i just want to see how the kid look that is freaking goofy i guess you could say it's very sims though oh my that's harry potter that's harry potter right there and that's it we're gonna give him wizarding hat you're a wizard harry they don't get that many outfits i will say for children like always we're gonna go with this i think he has a little cape in the back that's cute i'm gonna make him my son we're gonna name him junior morbid done Junior Marvin! All right, and that is it. We are done. Finished? Are you sure you are finished? You cannot return to the Creative Family screen to edit this family again. So that's a good thing to note. You can't come back into Create a Sim or Create a Family, as they call it. You when once you're done you're done you don't get any more options so we're gonna just click okay there we have our family now you can throw them away move them in um you know how the rest goes now let's fast forward a couple more years while we get the sims 2 and how things have changed but we are going to be looking at create a sim create new family create a family to be calf c-a-f instead of cast create a sim i think there's a more emphasis on families in the first few sims because that really stands out to me again we're gonna name the family gamer and if you'll notice there is create a sim but you also have make a child and create a dog and create a cat that's different from the first sims one also i will notice the background it looks kind of like a photo studio i see pictures in the background it almost looks like bella goth back there but i doubt it she's wearing a black dress we've got a mirror this is more lifelike sims have more motion it's just not like a 2d screen the sims have 3d aspect to them so this is a big difference from the first one and name her morbid after me and we have female and male which is the same but we now have more life stages we have toddlers we have child teenager adults and elders we got a total of three new life stages whereas in the first sims we only had two also the skin tones we have four so we've gotten one new skin tone added on to here when it comes to fitness we now have two different varieties there is a more fitted way and there's a more heavier weight which to be honest doesn't even look that much heavy she just looks like she's got some cake back there and maybe a little tummy but she doesn't look that much heavier so she doesn't look that much thicker <laughs> we're gonna make her a thicker sim i'm a thicker person <laughs> we're gonna make her also a little darker skin toned i'd say i fall into maybe this one it looks like you have a lot more customization looking and at these numbers you got six steps to go and within the steps you have a lot more customization you get four different hair colors which granted in the sims one you can't really uh customize the specific hairs you can actually flip through things is something else that's different from sims 1 you can now actually see a catalog instead of just flipping through and not really knowing where it is that you're going i'm gonna go ahead and go with the orange color just because i guess it's the closest to pink so let's do that now sliders is a big thing that was introduced in the sims 2 you can now slide the features around in your sims making it more prominent making it exceed out more moving stuff up and down from the shape of your eyebrows to the width of your nose and the way your lips curve this is a lot more detailed of course than the sims 4 and that's pretty obvious you get makeup options you didn't get that in the sims 1 so it's definitely evolved when it comes to being able to really customize those little details of your sims you did have accessories in the sims 1 but it wasn't really that customizable you didn't really get to choose it's just whatever was tacked on like we saw with the little kid with the hat and now we also get different categories for every day to formal we get underwear pjs swimwear athletic wear and outerwear so now we've got more categories we've added six 
categories when it comes to clothing options and your outfits. Not only that, but you do have separation of items. You have tops and bottoms. You also get outfits. For the last step, now we've evolved to aspirations. We have aspirations for our Sims. We've got the pleasure aspiration, family, romance, knowledge, fortune and popularity aspirations. So your sim will aspire to have something that they want and it's kind of like a goal. Oh my god, this is a banger. We still have the old system in place. Uh, that's something to know. So we just have different categories for this. They're sloppy to neat, shy to outgoing, lazy to active, serious to playful, and grouchy to nice. We also now have turn-ons and offs. So you can have turn-ons for your sims. Oh my goodness, and there's a wide variety of things from cologne to fatness <laughs> to vampirism, makeup, and hair colors. Turn-on for me would definitely be darker hair and maybe even, we'll go with facial hair. And turn-offs for me are definitely fitness because I'm scared of really, really big buff people because they scare me and I think they're gonna, they can beat me up. So <laughs> I'm gonna go with fit people. I forgot to choose an aspiration. Let's go with a knowledge aspiration for sure. And we are done with our sim. When you're done with your sim, they take you to this photo studio backdrop area, which is totally different from the Sims 1 because the Sims 1, it was just kind of like, you saw the little icon of your sim and that was it. And you could just move them in and start playing. In here, you get a little more customization because there are family relationships. If we were to add another sim, we can then add relationships like brother, sister, uncle, grandparent, all that, all of that and more. So it's a little bit more detailed when it comes to the world around you and trying to bring connections and form connections with other sims. Yeah, now we can go ahead and leave create a sim or create a family and hop into the game. Fast forward a couple more years and we are now in Sims 3. Now down here, we finally get create a household. It's no longer family. So create a household. Cat. First things first, in Sims 3 create a sim, it reminds me a lot of the Sims 2 create a sim, especially with the mirror in the back. We've got a nice little like set dressing. I'm seeing a lot more options over here on the side. The way the UI is kind of set up is a lot different. It still looks kind of the same, but it's looking more evolved. You're getting a lot more options. The sim looks a little bit more realistic. The graphics are definitely different, of course. With time, graphics just change. It's kind of, it's just what happens. We get the two genders, female and male. Something that's super different and already like sticking out at me because it's glowing is supernatural type. This is not in The Sims 2 or The Sims 1. So, but you can start off in uh, create a sim but, and choose a different type of sim that you want. Whether it be werewolf, a fairy, a witch, a vampire, a ghost, or a genie. So that is so cool. We're gonna go with human because we're human. In Sims 3 create a sim, we get six life stages instead of five with the addition of the young adult life stage which is completely new during this time for the sims for skin tones we've got a variety of skin tones we've now get more whimsical colorful type of skin tones we have purple you want your sim to be purple orange green blue and i like that they also have more normal skin tones but they have a more variety it could be either cool toned a warmer tone also off the bat you'll notice that this is now a slider for skin tones. It's not just an option that you click. There is a slider and I think that's very revolutionary for The Sims 3 because now you don't have to have just limited options of a skin tone. This can cater to almost about anybody and you can select and more precisely choose the skin tone that is your own. I think I'm around there. Body modifiers. In The Sims 2, we did have a more slimmer sim option and a thicker sim option, but this is now a slider. You now have the slider option, which actually gives you more customization for your sims to make them more your style instead of just having, again, just simple two options. The same for muscle size. Is it more buff or more slim down? Muscle definition? Interesting, that is new. And we get breast size, which is definitely new in The Sims 3. We haven't had this before. You just get the standard kind of option. There's a new UI 
i catalog but still the same old same old where you can scroll through and look at all the options that you get but something that's revolutionary to the sims 3 is this button right here and that is change color you now get more options not only that you get a color wheel this is completely new to the sims 3 this changed the game completely because now you have the option to set whatever color it is that you want this was a big selling point for them it seems like it because this is crazy and to this day people still really love the color wheel you can give yourself tips oh my gosh <laughs> more definition oh this is great this is really good because this is the first time i can actually give my sim pink hair oh my god i can spend hours trying to make this as close to my hair as possible and i think that is so great and so neat because you can now get more realistic sims that look more like you this has definitely changed the game the color wheel also extends itself to about almost everything from eyes to makeup. Makeup is also something you can customize. Oh my God, that's so cool. You can get very personal, you can get very detailed, especially when it comes to colors. Now, when it comes to the rest of the features on the face, it's the same as The Sims 2, it hasn't really uh, evolved much. It's the same system where it ha you have a slider and you can slide it back and forth and change it that way. I think it's just maybe gotten a little bit more detailed, especially with all the options that you get but it's the same old system something that's new is more details like freckles or no freckles you get beauty marks i remember you used to add beauty marks to all of my sims i just really like beauty marks man <laughs> a new addition to the sims 3 create a sim is tattoos tattoos have never been done before up until this point and might i add it's very in-depth you can place tattoos almost anywhere and they do have a good variety of different tattoos you can place these on your back your arm your chest ankle and once you click on one they're more specific so you can go a little bit more in depth to the back of your neck upper back full back lower back and your arms shoulders biceps forearms and wrists so it goes more in depth and it's very specific i actually do have a couple tattoos i have a big old rose on my shoulder cool i have one on my side on my ribs but there's not an option for that so we're gonna go lower back i've always secretly wanted a tramp stamp so <laughs> let's go for one heck yeah <laughs> and i have one more on my foot it's actually a deathly hollow symbol if y'all any potter heads out there but this, we're just gonna go with that because that's the closest thing is illuminati <laughs> or shane dawson when you need him this sim feels a lot more customized to me and I, I really appreciate that this is the closest i've gotten to me and what it is that i look like so that's really cool when it comes to clothing we have the same old same old options but when it comes to being more specific and narrowing in a little bit more you do have tops bottoms outfits you get shoes now because in sims 2 uh, bottoms already came with shoes you didn't get to customize that and added bonus you have accessories like actual like necklaces we didn't really have you didn't have that in sims 2 definitely not in sims 1 so it's a little bit more added bonuses here another great thing which i mentioned before was the color wheel but that's also extended to almost about everything in the sims 3 including clothing so we have create a style if you like a certain silhouette or whatever but you don't like the color you don't like the print whatever have you you can go ahead and change it to your liking take for example this shirt it's pretty cute i would just prefer it in white the minimalist in me but you can go ahead and even change certain themes you can make it rock and stone that sounds heavy and uncomfortable wood that sounds like it's gonna give you splinters carpeting and rugs so you can change how it would look abstract interesting different patterns leathers and furs Ooh, i like a good snake print actually i'm a big fan of snake print not bad i can see myself spending hours on this and i think that's a problem every little detail down to the little beads and the ribbon on the shirt that is so freaking cool one thing to know and point out is that a lot of people have trouble with the sims 3 and running it even my computer is just it's lagging quite a bit so it's known to be glitchy so that's something that came with the sims 3 as well now when we're done with how she looks let's go to personality we now get 
traits. This is new because in The Sims 2, you had the same system that Sims 1 had with the point system that they both used. This is actual traits and they give you a lot of different traits to go off. There is a mental category, a physical category, a social category and the lifestyle one and within them all these traits are very different and make your sim a little bit more specific because the sims 1 and 2 style isn't that zeroed in and i think this is more custom and i think from being perceptive to a photographer's eye and nurturing being a coward and hydrophobic loves to swim born salesman or brooding a diva to being an animal lover childish or eco-friendly this just really adds that like staple of your sims are very different to other sims based on these traits that they give you and it creates a different personality and brings your sims to life so for me myself and i i'm definitely gonna give myself an artistic trait i tend to be more artsy i'm definitely a super light sleeper so that's an interesting trait and i didn't even expect that to be in here but it's so like specific not gonna lie your girl kind of dislikes children Ooh, <laughs> i don't need the babies no <laughs> keep them to yourself i am definitely unflirty i do not know how to flirt to save my life how i got a man i don't know that was luck <laughs> and i'm most definitely a night owl based off of your traits and what you gave your sim it will give you a lifetime wish and options for you to click on there are so many but if you don't like any of this you can actually go customize lifetime wish and choose your own option there are so many this is kind of like ambitions something to work towards and a life goal if you will <laughs> i love i, I want to be a jack of all trades so we are gonna do this we reach level five of four different careers so i'm always trying to do everything Thing and anything and master it so that one's good you have favorites favorite meal oh your girl loves sushi and then your favorite type of music that your sim likes to hear is there an emo category not your average r&b hip-hop rock and roll and pop categories but it's interesting to note that they also have different cultural music genres there's chinese egyptian and my favorite color is actually between white and black so but i'm gonna go with black it's a mood now for the first time ever you can now change the pitch of your voice you get three options and this is just another way to make your sims more unique with the same old slider going from a lower pitch to a much higher pitch and i think my voice is kind of on the lower end maybe a little in the middle narzi banupto narzi banupto eh sounds about right and we're back with the astrological signs i am a taurus and sim is done there's also the option if you want to go and create sim to make a horse <laughs> you can make a dog a cat and you can play with genetics aka making an offspring if you want and create a sim but create a horse is definitely different from past create a sims this one is new and instead this takes you to this screen it's like it's definitely a backdrop of like someone in a photo studio about to take a family picture you can edit relationships just like in sims 2 where you can make a brother a sister if you have a grandmother an uncle a child whatever have you and this is where you get sent off into the world of sims 3 and do as you please and then in 2014 we got the sims 4 which is the newest generation of the sims games the sims 4 is still ongoing the generation has not ended they still plan on making more updates more game packs stuff packs and expansion packs so this can change but as of right now this is where we are now off the bat something that sticks out the most of this creative sim is how simple it is we don't have that backdrop anymore it's a clean ui it's very minimal it's just got an overall clean look the second thing that I noticed is the graphics and especially the way that the sims look they have this definitive look to them it's more cartoony the hair is more structured the sims are more soft and features are just more cartoony that's the best word whether you like the aesthetic or you don't it's definitely a leap forward and like all games graphics everything it just changes and evolves with time so that's something to note in the sims 4 creative sim so we used to have the standard mix 
male, female. But something that's revolutionary to The Sims 4 is the ability to customize gender. You can now have the option to have a masculine or a feminine physical frame, whatever gender you may be. You now have clothing preferences, masculine, feminine, again, whatever gender you may be, you have these options now. Sims will be able to become pregnant, get others pregnant, or neither. It works with whatever gender you are. Can this sim use a toilet standing? Yes or no? And this is very revolutionary. This is something that hasn't really been done in any games, as well as any of the sims generations. And this is very friendly towards the LGBTQ plus community. And like, we stand. So applause to The Sims 4 for adding this in, but this was later added on to create a sim. We have six life stages to choose from, but I will add that toddlers weren't always in here in the beginning. The Sims 4 in the beginning was very interesting to say the least. So toddlers were added on later on in The Sims 4 lifespan. We do have default walk styles, which is new to create a sim. You can have different options of the way your sims can walk. And I think they added this in to like better customize or maybe differentiate different sims from others um and i'm gonna go ahead and just go, go back to default <laughs> we're able to choose uh, voices and uh, not only that but choose uh, from a wider range we now have six options instead of three like in the sims 3 there was only three options here we have six and again with the same old slider over here you'll notice this floating thing this is where you click on to add on an aspiration to your sim again these are life goals something for your sims to look forward to and been there since The Sims 2. And we've got a wide variety. Again, ever since The Sims 2, we have traits to choose from for your Sims to make them more personal and more catered to what it is, the, the Sim that you want to create, make them hopefully stand out from other Sims. Main difference is that there's not the same amount of traits as in Sims 3. And not only that, you don't get to pick as many traits like in Sims 3. In Sims 3, you had the option of choosing five. Here, you only get three. Now down here, you have the option to play with genetics, which has been a thing since about Sims 2 also. You have Add Sims from Gallery, which is completely new to the Sims game. This is an online gallery where simmers and people who play the Sims from whatever parts of the world can upload creations, not only just catered for creative sim, but other aspects of the Sims 4. You can upload these creations to the gallery and locate it over here. And you can go ahead and download to other people's sims that they have created so this is completely new and definitely a big way to bring the community together to see other people's creations we also have occult sims as of right now we have four options we have an alien a vampire a mermaid and a spellcaster that you can make out of the gate from create a sim this is less than what we've got in sims 3 but again the sims 4 is still ever evolving and adding more stuff and content so this could change or it may not. We have add a pet, which is a little different from Sims 3. Here we just have standard add a dog or a cat. In Sims 3, we had a horse. <laughs> so we kind of dialed back a little bit on that. And never been done before, we have add sim via a story. This is create a sim story mode where the game will generate questions for you to answer. And based off of the answers that you give the questions, it will then generate a sim and add a little background to them. Hey, nice to meet you. Feel free to assign my gender adjust my appearance and select my clothing and don't forget to give me a name so based off of the answers that you gave this is you are locked into this aspiration and these traits this is the traits that it generates now my story i am unemployed i have no career we do have a fitness skill we do have a charisma skill and we have a standard starting fund so again based off of all the answers that you give it i don't know how it comes to form all this but it does and this has never been done before and it's pretty neat i will say and in case you haven't noticed we haven't really seen anything when it comes to sliders clothing objects and that is completely new and different in The Sims 4. Now their main selling point for creatism in The Sims 4 is so different it is click and slide and drag and drop um as you'll notice i am moving around the sim this is basically like moving around clay this is revolutionary for the sims this has never been done before you've never been able to just click on any parts and body parts of the sim and be able to move it around from their thighs to their legs to their feet to their facial features eyes eyebrows cheeks 
and jawline, chin, it's all whatever you want it to be, drag and drop and move around. Never have we been able to get such detailed sims and it goes a little bit for further. If you click on a double click on a certain area, you can then drag and drop those specific areas. Now a change from The Sims 3 to The Sims 4 is definitely the swatches. Swatches are back. If you remember from The Sims 2, we had swatches. This gives you more swatches than Sims 2. Um, it's definitely less than Sims 3, but you get more options and there is no color wheel. There are no sliders, nothing like that. It's all basically just click from face and skin tone options you get a bit more options especially when it comes to skin tones it hasn't always been that way in the sims 4 it's been updated slowly but surely and now we have a more variety of skin tones to choose from we have skin details more details for your sims to make them a little bit more custom and personal make them look a little bit more different to scars and crazy details like that to accessories like hats hats haven't been a thing in the sims 3 hats came with certain uh, hairstyles but these are now add-ons that you can tack onto your sims head going a little bit more in depth you've got accessories back from earrings to glasses to necklaces makeup has made a comeback swatches are a big thing when it comes to all the items there is since there is no color wheel or create a style you now have just the limited uh, swatch options and that's the way that the sims 4 works there are styled looks which are pre-made look almost like lookbooks that the sims creators have added so that it's a little easier if you just want to try this style you can on your sim in the sims as a whole so we have seven options from everyday formal to athletic to sleepwear party wear swimwear hot weather wear and cold weather wear we have the same categories top full bodies and bottoms but as you can tell they are now more categorized so that you still have the same catalog but if you're looking for a specific thing either a sweater brassiere vest not only that things are a little bit more easier to find in uh, these categories based also off of specific things whether you're looking for a more masculine look styles maybe you want a more preppy look and preppier style different materials you can now look based off of color whether you're looking for just a blue look a little blue today well that was a horrible joke and now you can also separate based off of different expansions and dlc that you've downloaded and i will say this is the easiest when it comes to looking for specific things in create a sim sims 4 takes the win on that one we also have sliders over here whether you want a sim that's more fit or unfit heavier sim or a slimmer sim there is a return to tattoos even though it's not as specific and you can't drag and drop wherever you want to put a tattoo there are different options and placements for certain tattoos my sim is all done and created now that we looked at sims 1 2 3 and 4 it is time to uh, give my final notes and uh, rate the sims create a sim which one came in first second third and last based off of the evolution or the de-evolution of certain aspects of create a sim now sims 1 is probably the most snooze yawn boring only because it was the first iteration so we're just gonna give it a little bit of a pass but there wasn't anything that stood out about the sims 1 create a sim we had to start somewhere though sims 2 definitely takes a leap forward and brings the sims more to life we're not looking at a 2d sim because technically we're still 3d but they just look more alive they look like they're less restricted in create a sim we got sliders would make them more customizable more to whatever features you want them to have and outfits as well because we didn't have that in sims 1 in sims 3 what really stands out to me is the creative style and the color wheel because now you can definitely like zero in on specific things that you want more catered to what you like and what you want your sims to look like and i gotta give a little nod to all the supernaturals that you can choose out of the gate there's a lot it's kind of crazy in sims 4 what really stood out was the customization when it comes to genders and to be able to customize certain things about a gender that you haven't been able to do before in any games also the drag and drop and slide around movement the, it's very clay like and never have we been 
able to get very specific looking sims like we have in sims 4 it's definitely a step forward when it comes to that so i think it's a no-brainer we're going to give the sims 1 uh, last place it's okay sims 1 it's fine you kind of get a pass <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and give a third place to sims 2 it was a good try but i also think that time kind of hindered it it was still a great great try even though it got third place it was definitely a leaps forward from sims 1 now it gets a little tricky between sims 3 and sims 4 there are just some really neat things in sims 3 and some really neat things in sims 4 but i'm gonna have to give second place to the sims 4 and, and even though i really like all of the just being able to customize my sims body and really get it like really close to what it is that i look like i, I definitely have to go back to the sims 3 for me it's the best and that's why i give sims 4 second place and in first place goes to sims 3 especially with the wheel and create a style it just felt more personal good job sims 3 <laughs> now those are all my personal opinions i've given you a look back a look see into the past so let me know down in the comments below do you agree do you disagree do you think create a sim first place should have been given to another a sims generation let me know in the comments down below but that's gonna be it for this thank you for tagging along if you made it this far and i will see you all in my next video bye for now